Hey, this is Perbius 1030 with Tank King Gardener. Alright, this video goes out to Chris uh, and Rachel. Alright, here's the deal. They asked me about composting and they're worried about it stinking and things like that. Now, my compost I keep in the house. Usually I keep it in one of those uh, dish tab things. But, as you can see, there's a little bugs and stuff flying around in here. And if I had a layer of fresh grass to put on this and get this thing cooking, I wouldn't have that problem. But this is more of a cold compost. It's been taking some time to break stuff down. But here's the thing. It don't stink. That does not stink. I don't smell it. And you'll know if your compost ain't working right because it'll attract critters. But if you do this right, you won't have no problems. Mine's just kinda out here in the wilderness. So, this right here is a potato. Nope, an apple. It's breaking down. Um, I put a lot of things in this compost pile. Uh, paper, uh, fruits, vegetables, kitchen scraps, that sort of thing. Here's a few things you will not put in your compost pile. And let me just turn this camera around so I can kinda talk to you guys. Here we go. Awesome. Okay, let's just move this right here. Alright. Looks good to me. Okay. So, here's a few things you're not going to put in your compost pile. You are not going to put any kind of cheese, any kind of meat. You're not going to put any kind of animal waste as far as domesticated animals unless it's cow manure, sheep manure, horse manure, uh, bat guano, worm fecal matter, things like that. If the animal is a vegetarian herbivore then it's okay to use their fecal matter in your compost. Um, there are ratios to this. It's kind of like a recipe. <clears throat> You got your browns, which would consist of things like cardboard, uh, old leaves, um, and these are like carbons, if you will, uh, things of that nature, <clears throat> paper, and then you have your greens, which would be your, your nitrogens, which are your, your long grass. This is this grass right here is nitrogen. Um, your kitchen waste, your uh, any any manure that you would put on there and with manure you got to be careful it's got to be a couple years old you don't want to put fresh hot manure on there it's probably not the best idea now with this take a warning with a compost pile whenever it's cooking correctly if you stick your hand in that compost pile for whatever reason you can get burned because they can get up to 160 degrees um, compost piles have been known to catch fire now with that being said that's an extreme case with nobody going out and turning it and nobody keeping it moist uh, compost piles need water they need to be aerated and they'll be fine and you'll get rich compost now what I do with this is I take this stuff and I run it through a couple screens I use a uh, hydroponic net bucket about a 12 inch and I also use a little tiny uh, a child's sand screener and it works pretty good and it breaks it down to a decent size now whenever I do this I do understand that yes I am going to have bugs I'm probably you know certain critters that's inevitable I have a colder compost pile than most people but I'm always turning it and working it and it's always breathing. And I have this stuff called myco, which I put in there, which is like a mycelium, uh, a fungus, if you will, that attacks. Uh, it's a living organism that eat, goes in there and it eats things, breaks it down, which is really good. And remember, if you're going to put food scraps in your compost pile, make sure that you break them down. So, you know, if you got worms and stuff in your garden, whenever you break that down to a certain level, it'll be okay because they'll uh, they'll eat that and and break it down real nice and they'll give you worm castings in return so it's a 
win-win situation with composting. Um, now, I'm sure that, you know, like Chris, some people say, well, it's going to stink up my kitchen. And what it is, is they actually have compost buckets. They look like buckets, but they're bins that are, you won't smell that. They're closed and that sort of thing. Um, and then you can even put your eggshells in there. Eggshells, if you do, you know, crush them up or just put them in there, they are a good source of lime for uh, acidic plants like tomatoes. I like to just kind of crush up my eggshells and put them down by the roots. Uh, coffee grinds. If you guys go to Starbucks, they'll give you all the coffee grinds you want. Go in there, get a bunch of coffee grinds, throw them on the old pile. Coffee grind is a, uh, actually, I think it's a green. Yeah, I'm going to call it a green. I could be wrong. It could be a brown, carbon, but it works. That's pretty much where I'm going with this. Um, like I said, no dairy, no meat, no breads, no grains, nothing crazy like that. Uh, I've had people ask me, is it okay to put rice, just plain old cooked brown rice or something on there? And honestly, I don't see where it would hurt, but in the same sense, I don't know. I haven't tried it. So you can always experiment with your compost bin as well. Now, a compost bin does not have to be some expensive, tumbling, $500 barrel. You can make one, get a 55 gallon drum, run a steel rod through it, make legs for it, and you can even have a little wheel on it with a motor if you wanted to for tumbling. Uh, you gotta cut a door in it and aerate it, but there are video, countless videos on YouTube about that. Or, if you wanted to, you could always uh, just build, take a piece of fencing <clears throat> and connect it to each other, like a round cage if you will, and start doing your compost pile like that. Um, now, obviously it's going to kill the grass wherever you have the compost pot, just in case you don't know that. Uh, and if you have animals and you have pets, make sure, excuse me, make sure that whenever you cut your grass that you get all the animal feces out of the yard if they do go in your yard because that can cause some serious issues in your compost pile. And uh, if your compost pile stinks or you start having rodents go through your compost pile, you're not doing something right you might want to watch a couple videos and and really it it just depends on what recipe you want to go with to get compost and, and exactly how you want to you know uh, incorporate that into your composting everybody's different uh, me personally I layered mine the first time and it broke down pretty nice so I have a bunch of uh, refuse in here now like uh, apples and things of that nature just it don't really look like an apple but whenever it really starts breaking down what you'll get let me get down in here it's some of real good broken down, broken down stuff uh, here we go And yeah, I'm digging in here with my bare hands. I probably shouldn't, uh, due to some of the critters that may or may not be in here, but that's okay. So, uh, more or less, what's going to happen is all your debris and all your matters is going to just break down. And like right there, that was probably part of something. But it don't stink smells like fresh soil <clears throat> and sometimes if you put seeds in here and you catch a seed and it's growing off to the side or it's setting off to the side it will sprout and start growing now with compost you can do some really interesting stuff like uh, if you had wood chips and stuff it gets it cooking faster but uh you can also make a compost tea and all that is is you take some of this you screen it you make uh hold on Here we go. After you're done screening it, it should look something like this. Right here. Beautiful, just real crumbly. And if I do this, it stays together. But it falls apart too. So, once you get that, 
it smells like soil, you know you're doing it right. Now what you can do with this is take this and put it in a um, piece of pantyhose or a uh, uh, something that'll that will let the liquid flow through it, and put it in a bucket with a air bubbler for two three days until that water turns real dark black and that is going to be your compost tea and whenever you feed that to your plants let me show you what happens all right let's let's go this way guys i've been these plants are about three weeks old and whenever i first started giving them their tea they were little guys like those guys over there i got a few clones over there i'm working with but um yeah these are these are only three weeks old and they're pretty big I mean for a size comparison there's a five gallon bucket and that's in a planter so you know it, it really it really works I've been having to downsize for reasons which I'm not gonna get into but anyways so there you go guys that's how you uh, get some composting done as you can see my little modest bin you know, it's nothing fancy, it's nothing flashy. So, if you uh, if you want to know any, any more about composting, you can check out some other sites online or get a hold of me, and I'll tell you what I can. Uh, until then, 